Hey guys, this is Eric with The Dramatic and another Friday bonus video. We got something completely different going on for you today. Um, I've been talking with Loretta about this for a long time and really thinking about it for a while and uh, uh, just wanted to do a snare drum build, a custom snare drum build. And that's what this video is gonna be. My grand vision is to be building them regularly under the name Attic Custom Drums. So anyway, so what we're working with today, also PS, this work table back here was my dad's. If you've been following the channel, you know why that's special. I learned this week that it was built by my dad's dad, my, my granddaddy Henninger, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's got extra sentimental value too, so we moved it from mom and dad's house over here to one of our barns, uh, so I can kind of work. So here's what we're working with. We've got a 14 inch by five and three quarter inch birch shell with reinforcement rings, quarter inch bearing edge. When this is said and done, it'll have 10 lugs, black hardware, um, and uh, let's see here, black 10 lugs, black hardware. I'm putting a 30 strand pure sound snare wire on it. Evans Genera dry on the batter side and Evans Clear 200 on the bottom side. I think this is gonna be a beast of a snare drum. I think it's gonna look real pretty. It's gonna sound really nice. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do right here, now that we've got all that intro out, by the way, if you, uh, if you haven't already, like this channel, subscribe to this channel. Um, we uh, would love to have you and see your comments and, uh, and just kind of let you be part of, uh, part of uh, our little dramatic family here, and um, which is, and the dramatic is part of a larger community um, that uh, we love being a part of. So um, this is probably coming out of clear blue to, to all of you, even our followers. Um, unless you're somebody that, that, that I talk, I, I've talked to on the phone or anything. Um, but anyway, I'm super excited about this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put, um, put a snare bed in here for our, uh, 30 strand pure sound snare wires. So I'm going to use, uh, 50 grits, uh, sandpaper to do that. Um, I might film a little bit of me doing it. Um, and then we'll kind of check back in with. Uh, the finished product and then we'll go to staining and then we'll go to marking and drilling and all that stuff so i'm really excited stay tuned okay so i have marked off on both sides uh of the snare i've got my little uh like measuring out chart here on the ground which you can get for free at drummaker.com pretty cool uh, i just had it printed out and laminated a local printer it's got spots for 10 and 8 lugs um, which will be, of course, like a, a 10 lug drum. Everything's gonna be at a 36 degree angle off center. Eight lug drum is gonna be 45 degrees angle off center. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Um, I just learned all that recently. I didn't, I'd never taken the time to like do the science of it. I'm like, oh, this is cool. So I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of learning as we've done this. Anyway, I've just marked it off with some delicate uh, painter's tape um, just to give me a guide, measured it out and, um, was just kind of pulling up our pure sound 30 strand. Look at that beast. Look at that. It's ginormous. I love these. I had, um, I've got a 24 strand pure sound that I'm eventually going to put on my pork pie snare, my 13 by seven. Um, and then I have one of these on my 14 by six Tama. It's, well, I think it's 14 by five and a half on my Tama snare. But anyway, I love these. They're very meaty. Give a lot of a lot of yumminess. So let's just uh, let's just do a little a little sanding. Again, 50 grit. Um, this does not have to be a deep a deep thing. Um, an eighth of an inch is more than enough, and that's pretty small. The idea is you just don't want any of the snare touching shell, so that you get a it just touches head and you get a clean clean sound. So I'm just going to sand this out a little bit and then I've got a finer grit, like a 200 grit to just kind of smooth it out with uh, when we're done. So uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. So I did just have this thought. Oh, down here in the pitch black at night in the country, um, this may or may not offend some, some of you, but I should probably have my gun with me just because you don't know what kind of critters, um, snakes, bears, coyotes, they're all out here. And, um, and just generally scary people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, if I was standing here by myself, it's pitch black, should have brought a flashlight. Did, don't have one of those either. Anyway, so I just finished doing this one side and what I did is I'm not touching the bearing edge on it. 
just on the inside here where that snare is going to be. I just filed a little bit off. I'm going to smooth it out and I'm going to do the same thing over on, on this side. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I have, I keep looking at myself and not at the, the lens. <laughs> Uh, I went ahead and I used the, uh, this heavy duty, uh, 50 grit, I had some 60 grit too that I found, but I, I bought this. Um, and then, um, so I filed down with this and then I'm fine sanding it with this so that it'll be nice and smooth. And that's, what did I say this was? Let's look at 220 grit. So obviously like if you're like me and you're learning some of this stuff, the lower the number, the the, um, the coarser it is, and the the more it's used for removal of of of, of the surface, and then the higher the number, the 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 finer the the grade is, and so it it's for fine not fine tuning, but for smoothing surfaces out. Can I show you? Can I show you the uh, one of the rims? I'm just really excited about how they look. Hold on. Obviously, that's the snare side <laughs> rim. But isn't that pretty? 10 lugs. So um, 10 lugs um, is going to give you a more uh, ra a, a range of tuning that you don't have with an 8. Standard seems to be 8 from what I've gathered. Um, all the ones that I have are 8. Um, but just doing some research, I was like, let's go 10. Um, so you have some opportunities to kind of get the tuning even higher if, if you really like a high tune snare. So it's a little bit more more. Bleh. A little bit more versatility uh, with the 10 lug but isn't that pretty I'm really excited about that so of course the lugs and the um, the tension rods will all match uh, that but I'm super excited about it hey so I have got the um, I've got three quarters of an inch uh, taped around again I'm using this uh, delicate surface painters tape I thought that uh, that would be better than uh, regular because I kind of view this as a delicate surface so um so I've done I've done one side we're going to do the other side all right here's a little uh tip I guess uh you know I don't like to, when you when I tear the stuff it always tears at an angle and I look at my ears and I'm like pooching out with my my pencil and all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, I can never tear it straight. Like it always tears at an angle. So if you don't have scissors with you, but you've got a knife, I'm just like laying this against the side and then just pulling against that. And then I get a pretty clean. It's not perfect, but it's better than, better than my tear. Okay, so before we uh, stain our, our snare drum shell here, I'm gonna use this uh, Minwax uh, pre-stained wood conditioner. It's, uh, the idea is to get a more even, less blotchy uh, look with the stain. Um, <clears throat> obviously, as it says in the description, the Red and I are not sponsored by any of these companies that we may, um, of their products that we're using or anything. So um, anyway, but there, I'm gonna use some of that. And then I showed this to you in a previous video, but then we're going to use our min-waxed water-based uh, wood stain in this royal pine color, which I think is going to be real pretty. So let's do some pre-staining. So I'm applying this with a foam brush. Um, I just think that it, and you can see it goes on, goes on clear, and you kind of want to spread it out so that you don't have any Clumps. All right, so anyway, so we'll get this finished. All right. We got that coated. Uh, Y'all, a little bit of this goes a long way. Like I hardly used anything out of this, out of this uh, cup here. Let me bring the camera back up. Yeah, boys. So um, at any rate, so we got that done. And uh, we'll let this dry, and then we'll uh, start wiping uh, stain on it with a rag. Um, there's different ways to apply stain. Listen, this is the first time I've wood stained, so I've been doing a lot of research. So we're going to experiment together. 
You could do it with a synthetic brush. You could do it with a roller. Um, <clears throat> everything that I've read and, and seen says that putting it on with a rag is the best way to do it because when you apply it, you do have to take off um, the excess with a rag. So with the rag, you're kind of giving, getting the nice even distribution, spreading it out and kind of moving the excess around as you go and then also able to wipe it off with the other side of the rag. So that's what I'm gonna to attempt to do. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so we're gonna let this pre-stain dry. Okay, so <clears throat> I forgot something. So I'm going through with a rag, a lint-free microfiber rag. It's supposed to be lint-free. Anyway, and I'm just wiping the excess. Anything that didn't penetrate the wood, I'm just wiping up so that I don't have to uh, sand anything. <laughs> Um, because if it dries, um, and is, of course, I didn't like lay it on super thick, so it wasn't drippy. So, um, hopefully that will take care of what we needed to do. All right. Now we're going to let it dry and we can stain. Okay. So I let that pre-stain conditioner sit overnight. You don't have to let it sit overnight. The reason that I did was just a time thing. Um, and then I took a 220 grit sandpaper, a fine grade, and I just lightly went over the surface of the shell to, uh, to just kind of go ahead and remove any kind of, um, any place where maybe it had been a little uneven. So it's had good time to soak into the wood. So in theory here, we should get a nice even distribution of the stain. So we're going to jump into that. So I've got an old uh, t-shirt bed sheet that I'm going to be applying this with. Um, you see how that works? It seems like they're, of course, soft, scratch-free. So I also made sure I removed all of the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, any, uh, any kind of sawdust from the, the light sanding that I did over the, uh, the conditioner. So I also obviously want to make sure you do that so you don't have a lot of sawdust in your, uh, in your, in your stain. <laughs> so as I'm going ahead and I'm wiping this on with this rag, I think that color's looking really pretty. Oh, yeah. Um, of course, the idea is to get it even, nice and even and um, kind of wipe the excess off before the stain um, starts to dry so you don't have any um, dark uh, blotchy spots. Like, see right there, I've got a lot of excess. So I'm going to spread that out, wipe that off, and I'm moving in the direction of the grain. So the grain runs... Uh, a, you know, left to right, I guess, is the best way to say it. All right, so I'll finish this up, and we'll take a look. So now I'm going to go back over it with a uh, with a clean rag. Hello. <laughs> and um, it's a messy process, um, but I went with a rag over a brush or a um, foam brush or anything like that. You can spray the stain if you've got a sprayer. We do have one, but I wanted to do this one by hand. So now I'm just taking a completely clean rag of the same material, and I'm just trying to remove any excess, and I'm gonna make sure that kind of everything looks, looks as uniform as possible. Now, I wanted it to be a little lighter because I wanted to see uh, that wood grain in there. Let me go finish going around here and then, um, and of course, like I want it to, you know, kind of have a unique, unique look to it. I may go over it with a second coat. Um, I'm done. I see that maybe I could have applied more. Uh, I don't know though. Oh, I dig it. I think it looks real pretty. So we'll see, we'll see, and um, but I think it looks really good. I might not apply another coat. I love the, I love the wood texture in there, and I like the way how it's soaked into the wood and left those natural markings in the birch. It's real pretty. There's a spot I need to wipe down a bit. It's like, all right. <laughs> 